turning this game into Stratris Infinite puzzles took me a hell lot of time, and today I'll try to show you its entire journey from start to finish. This project started when I was just drawing various rooms for fun. I was certain that I'd use them somewhere, but didn't know I'd put them on stones in Shatras. Then I knew the levels should consist of puzzle pieces that fit into a 3x3 grid, so I started generating these shapes with the help of coding. Actually, this project was initially named either Revertris or Plastris Infinite. I wanted to improve on my first puzzle game and make very similar mechanics in the second one. In Plastris, you can use one shape to fill in the cells on a grid and another, completely different one, to remove placed blocks. I thought that in Shatris I'd make one shape using which you could reverse the state of cells under it, so the filled cells would become empty and vice versa. At some point I realized that beating levels was much easier and even faster if you simply clicked anywhere on the screen instead of trying to think how to solve them. This idea of reverting cells just didn't work out, so I turned Shatris into a game with different shapes that can be used multiple times to fill in all the cells on the screen. As time passed by, I kept drawing new runes. In total, Shatris has 5 types of runes, each with 10 different possible pictures. I later reused all of them again to make Steam achievement icons. Then came the time to implement history into the game. This thing allows players to revert previous moves in a chronological order, just like pressing Ctrl plus Z in pretty much any program. Believe it or not, I love adding that feature to my games. For some reason it always works out from the first try, and it makes me feel as if I can manipulate time. Cool! Borrowing even more ideas from Plastris, I wanted some particles to spawn when you place down the stones in a game. They didn't look good at all, so instead I decided to play a little animation for that action. Then came the animations for reverting the move and hovering over the game board. One cool thing we played with in Plastris trailer was holding down the left or right mouse button to continuously place or remove blocks. This feature never made it into the game, because it simply broke everything if used in unintended ways. This time, however, I made sure these mechanics would work properly. With the addition of particles and music by my favorite composer Hypersleep, the game started to look pretty charming to me. Less is more is what they say, and when we are talking about a cursor in Shatteris, that was totally a good decision to keep it as simple as possible. For a long time, my game used to look like it had a party of its own. It was constantly switching colors, because at that point I hadn't come up with an idea on what to do with that effect, but I liked it nonetheless. One of the best changes between Plasters and Shatteris is the user interface. I opened Plasters today and I found it extremely annoying to click right mouse button to switch between shapes. What is worse, you won't find out which shapes are available to you unless you press that very button. In Shatteris, you can see all of them on the screen and easily switch between them using a mouse wheel. It's such an obvious necessity that I can't even believe Plasters didn't have that. After that, I defined the colors I wanted to use in the game, made smooth transitions between them and added an animation when you win a level. I then recorded and added sound effects, which I believe I haven't changed ever since. Sound effects are just not my cup of tea and I would love to find a sound designer for my future projects. Then I made a simple menu for the game. I'm quite happy with it, because it resembles what the game is like and it's also susceptible to color, particles and music changes. Also, both Shatteris and Plasteris can be played without knowing any language at all. I try to prove a point that we as gamers have evolved so much that most of the times we don't need words to understand what is happening. Here's how Shatteris demo used to look like. It was released for Steam Festival which took place in June 2020. Compared to the current version, the game was missing 450 levels, one game theme and soundtrack, random generation system and many quality of life features. After the festival, I wanted to make some idle animations that will happen to runes outside of the game board. I thought it would be fun to have something happening around while you are thinking. The idea came from other casual games, such as Divide by Sheep and There are Flying Fish and Clicker Heroes, in which random objects sometimes pop up on the screen. I made quite a few animations for runes changing into different ones, but later abandoned the idea because it made the game look cluttered. Again, I decided that in this case, less is more. 
the single most important addition to the game in my eyes became a system I call Shape Counter. It counts how many shapes of different types are placed on the game board and shows you these numbers on the screen, subtracting from them as you place runes down. I didn't even think about it at the beginning of this project, because there are often multiple ways to solve a single level. Moreover, I believed it would make the game too easy. Instead, it allowed me to make much harder levels without frustrating the players. There are up to 5 different shapes available on a single level in Shatteris. If you place two instances of one shape onto the board when there was supposed to be only one, you most likely won't be able to solve the puzzle. As far as multiple solutions are concerned, I simply don't prohibit more shapes from being placed. This system is merely a guideline. Since by that point I had already given 400 or more levels unique names for save file purposes, I decided to also show them in the game. It ruins the no language knowledge acquired rule, but these names are simply there to entertain the player, they don't affect the gameplay and you don't have to understand them. By the end of Shatter's development I made another obvious improvement. I stopped reloading the level and showing loading screens on the level reset. Now I just revert all moves at once and allow you to instantly continue playing. Did you also ever do anything so obvious that you wonder why you hadn't done that before? Please let me know about the situation in the comments to this video. These were all the highlights I could pick from 8 months of recording my progress on Shatteris. I hope you found this video helpful, interesting or at least entertaining. If you'd like to help me by making Shatteris easier to find for people who are interested in puzzle games, please add it to your wishlist on Steam or recommend it to a friend. And I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.